Yeah. Okay, so welcome everyone. Uh, Coach Carly here. I wanted to bring my friend Tina on today. We have known, I did say it was 15 years, but I stand corrected. We've known each other for 20 years now. We met when I was 21, so that's definitely giving my age away. But uh, I, Tina, Tina has been a really good friend for a really long time. Uh, we met in London and at a time in our lives where we were both in a very, very different setting, weren't we both? Um, we so I wanted to get, <laughs> I wanted to get Tina on because we've been through a pretty massive journey together over the last 20 years in terms of our personal development and all that shiznis and and I've kind of seen Tina grow again exponentially in the last year or two um, and throughout that 20 years as well but her kind of the course of her development has shifted again recently and I just wanted to get you on Tina just to I suppose share your own journey of from surviving to thriving because that's very much the nature of the work that we both really do. Squishy wants to join in and say hello so there she hey, is. Squish. <laughs> oh, she's already eaten so I don't know where she's pestering me but come baby. <laughs> So Tina, I think probably the best person to introduce yourself is you, babe. Talk to me about when we met all that time ago, where you're at in your life and where you had come from as well. Okay, so that's quite a, a big topic. <laughs> <laughs> but um, in a nutshell, like when we first met, I was uh, wild, like I absolutely insanely wild, um, doing lots of drugs doing drinking lots working really hard but I was also kind of having the time of my life as well as all the wounding and toxicity that went with it um but I was also I didn't realize then that I I realized later in life but um I didn't realize then that I was literally running away from my childhood I was doing everything I could to get away from it um even though I was like 26 when I met you I think 25 26 because I'm like five years older than you. Um, and yeah, I, I just went on a journey for like, it was like 15 years of solid partying. And I was just wrapped up in this identity of being the, the head honcho, the queen bee of the pubs. Everyone knew me and associated me with the pubs and being Miss Popularity, Miss Party Girl, like knowing everyone, everyone knowing my name. Um, you were the it, Peggy Mitchell of, the, of I, your of, of our generation. You were the yeah, Peggy Mitchell. Yeah, the Mark Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I was the Peg yeah, I was the Peggy Mitchell. <laughs> and um, does that make so me Pat much, Butcher? I don't think my earrings were that bad. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no um but yeah my identity was completely wrapped up in it and without them who was I so when I went on so I went on a journey of at toxic relationships no fucking sleeping dr uh, doing loads of drugs estranged from my very toxic family um and I was basically on my own and my friends were the only people I had in my life um and they kind of propped me up and then I got cancer at the age of 36 and that kind of shook me the foundations that I had built myself up on very shaky foundations because they're all depending on me working or me getting fucked up do you know what I mean so um I didn't build nothing for myself because I didn't know how to build anything for myself because I'd never shown how to build anything for myself so um yeah so the cancer came and that kind of shook the foundations that I was on and I started questioning everything really like why am I here? I can't go back to that life. And what cancer gave me was freedom from my old life. I didn't realize how much I wanted to get out of that cycle of working all the time, being in the pubs, doing the party and doing all the drugs. And cancer gave me that freedom to say, no, I can't do that because I've got cancer, right? So when the cancer shifted, when I got through that and I healed from that, um, I was just like, well, what the fuck do I do now? Go back to the way it was. Um, and then I'd also started my journey when I was in cancer with Reiki and all this kind of stuff because you were on Reiki and I thought, oh gosh, she's just a fucking do good. I try to tell everyone to do think positively and all this kind of stuff. Like Carly was living her best. Tell life. Tell me what you really think, team. <laughs> I, 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 it's funny that Carly you was living that her best as... life in um, <laughs> in Australia. So I was just like, but then you know when I had the cancer, I think we got in touch during that time because I'd started learning Reiki and all this kind of stuff. 
and then I just when I went back after the cancer when I went back to work it was just like I had this duality in me where this old version of me was dying like this boss bitch tough tits tina ball breaker fucking says it like it is party girl that part of me was dying and it was just like I didn't want to be that person anymore because it felt so false to me I feel like you're still the person that tell, tells it how it really is though we've lost your yeah. video somewhere Who? oh carol's on carol can you <laughs> meet yourself babe <laughs> because your um, video is... yeah there we go so yeah i still had this fucking my identity was still really my worth and everything was still really wrapped up in that and that's where the healing journey started to begin right um and and you helped me a lot with that like you were like my go-to person, like you were guiding me and um, giving me all these resources, introducing me to the law of attraction, going deeper into the law of attraction, as well as showing me EFT and all that kind of stuff and really helping me through some really hard kind of moments. Like when I realized that I was abused at three years of age and when I was facing all that kind of childish shit that I'd been running away from for so long. Had you... Um, did you had you repressed the memories of that did it all come up through personal development or had you just kind of numbed it through drinking drugs during those kind of early party years mm, there was one memory that was repressed um but the rest of it it was kind of like I was I used to I used to I remembered it all um but I used to say, I'm not going to be like my mother. I don't think about it because it didn't bother me. Where it did, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I was just so, I'd numbed and dissociated from it for so much that I didn't realise it affected me. Do you know what I mean? In a way. Um, but it would come out in rage. Like I'd go into blind furies and stuff. Like if anyone come in my space mm -hmm. or even touch me, that would be it. I'd lose it and get into trouble. And, you know, looking back on it now, I know the reasons why that happened um and but with the repressed stuff it was I think it was when after I'd done the Reiki master with you which was like three or four years into my journey and um I I was sat at home and these memories come up of me having this recurring dream of the shadow man trying to come and get me um there was also my mum telling me this this thought of like this memory of my mum telling me he never touched you talking about her ex-husband when I was a nipper mm. nipper um and he never touched you he never laid a hand on you and like her repeating that to me and me thinking then like that's fucking weird for her to keep saying that to me and mm. there was something else that come up and um I remember I was what was I, I was getting a healing somewhere and then all of a sudden all these emotions come over me and I remember being lying in my bed and this shadow coming towards me when I was like three, four years of age. And I was just like, oh, and a knife and like this kind of memory stuff started coming up and it's still a bit unclear, but I was just asking these questions. Like, why would my mom say that to me at three years of age? Do you know what I mean? Like, why would she keep saying like reiterating he never laid a hand on you? Do you know what I mean? And it was my mum had tried to commit suicide just after that as well. Mm -hmm. So I was like, something definitely fucking happened to me as that as a like three, four year old with him coming in and a knife. I remember a knife and all this kind of stuff. Because I remember uh, me having a knife in the mirror as well, like a butter knife and putting it near my 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 vagina when I was like three and my mum coming in going, moving it away. Um mm -hmm. So I remember that really distinctly and me having an excuse as to why I was doing it. And it was really legitimate to me. Like someone showed me how to do that or something like that, I said. Mm. Um, so these are all the memories that were coming up. And I was just like, why is that? Why is that coming now? And then, yeah, I had that realization, which you helped me through. And I was in bits. I was just like, fuck, I was only three. I thought it was from when I was eight that the abuse happened from the other fucking stepdad. But it wasn't. It was the one before that I thought was only beating my mum. But he wasn't. Mm. He was coming and visiting me at like early hours of the night. That was it. I couldn't sleep through the night. I was scared of the dark. Like I wouldn't be able to sleep like from a very young age. Like that's it. I'm not sleeping because mm. I was scared someone was going to come in and get me. It's interesting, so. isn't it? When you kind of kick off the healing journey and you kind of you deal with the the layers that you know about. 
yeah. then when you kind of heal and release those layers from your your energy and your physical body wherever they're trapped from from you start having other memories coming up because those memories can't surface until you've actually healed and released some of the other stuff um and it's it's hectic work isn't it and the thing is it never gets I always say to people personal development where it doesn't get easier you become more willing to do it but yeah because you've you've worked on the surface level bullshit stuff when you get to those other layers that are underneath that it becomes darker and nastier each time you do it so it's not it's like then you reach the proper core wounding which is where your kind of level of expertise has ended up isn't it because that's kind of where you ended up working towards yourself well, yeah, it was getting down in that darkness of shame. Like I had so much shame around my sexual, my sexuality, my body, like all that kind of stuff. And as you said, it's layers upon layers upon layers upon layers. Like, and this is where the work really is, right? So it's where we kind of, um, where we've shunned and feared parts of ourselves so we wouldn't be abandoned as children or growing up like where the parts of ourselves that we've been told that we're not good enough um, I mean you don't have to have come from a really abusive childhood to have this because I think as women we're told to be a certain way as a child like be a nice little girl don't dress like that mm-hmm. don't do this don't do that do you know what I mean we're always being programmed to be a certain way as a little girl um, and we're also brought up with an inherent fear of being a girl. Like, do you know what I mean? If you dress that way, you'll get unwanted attention, keep your legs mm. crossed and all this kind of stuff. It's like, can't show our femininity. So there's layers and layers and layers that you have to go through. Um, I was actually talking to Cam, I think, about this the other day and how, you know, um, we were, where were we walking? We were walking somewhere and and just the, I just kind of vocalised the, um, the thought that as women, you have to always be conscious of where you're walking, especially when it's dark, down alleys. That's right. We went out for dinner. It was night time. And I was just conscious of where I was walking. And I just vocalized it to him. You know, it's like men don't walk around thinking, oh, yeah. maybe I shouldn't go down that dark alley because I get might get mugged or raped, you know. Um, and that's not that's not saying anything bad about why men don't have to feel that way. It's just it just is how it is, isn't it? So, yeah, yeah it's yeah. just uh, yeah. We have like an one of those things. Fear. Yeah, it's one of those things. And we have like this inherent fear booked into us. I mean, when I used to get off my nut, I'd walk everywhere at three, four in the morning <laughs> off my face. Do you know what I mean? Probably, but, but no one would have come near you though, mate, because you would have slipped <laughs> Not with my mouth, I'd hit them. <laughs> I remember I was walking down the street one day, some guy touched my ass as we were, we were walking up Tottenham Court Road. Some t- guy touched my ass as he was walking past. I picked up the nearest bin, like bin bag, and shoved it round his head. <laughs> like, I'm just not going to be bottles or anything in that bag. I just didn't, don't touch my ass, bang. Like, that's what I mean. Like, Get out of my pub. <laughs> yeah. I was just mental. Like, don't fucking touch me. But, yeah. you know, I didn't realise that rage was coming from all the times that I was touched without fucking consent. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, And yeah, that's yeah. one, that's another thing. Like, you've got all that surface, like, you've got all this stuff. You go down, as you were talking before, you go down to the core to of what happened, like that shame and, you know, not only the shame of what's happened to you or what you have about your body, but also the shame of what you've done to other people. But then you've got this other stuff that you don't even fucking realise that you've internalized and normalized within yourself Mm -hmm. like what we're talking about like walking down the street and not going down an alleyway but there's Um, also the shame isn't there about how you have disrespected yourself as a woman over the years with whoever you've been out with and how you've allowed yourself to be treated because it's kind of repeating those patterns of you don't feel like anyone's respected you you don't respect yourself therefore you don't really give a shit about anyone treating you with respect at the time until you learn that self-love and those boundaries that come with it. Yeah. Yeah. No, hundred percent. That was a huge one for me. Like I'd go on shame spirals where I'd just be hit with all these memories of the kind of things, uh, how I allowed people to teach me, but I kind of internalized it and blamed it on myself. Mm. How did you used to, when, when, when those feelings of shame, because shame is a really horrible, horrible, toxic just Mm. real low vibrating emotion and and nothing good comes out of shame Mm. when back in those partying years when those feelings of shame came up how did you deal with it then versus how you deal with it now 
I would bypass it, numb it and shame others. Mm, yeah, just deflect it. Yeah. yeah. So uh, like I would be a bitch to someone else because of it. I'd make them feel shame because I was feeling shame myself. Do you know what I mean? I'd point out like other people's insecurities and their not enoughness to make myself feel better about myself. Mm. Do you know what I mean? How That's do you deal I'm with it now? I dive into it if I feel shame. I dive into it head first because I feel that shame is like one of the most fertile ground, grounds that in our internal landscape to grow from because it holds so much empowerment in there. It holds a lot of self-trust, self-belief and all that kind of stuff within shame. Um, it is the lowest vibra vibrational emotion that, that we can feel. It's like it's lower than death, I believe, if you go on the emotional frequency scale or whatever it's called. Um, mm. And, you know, and you can come back from shame. It's the, it's the one thing that prevents us from receiving, right? Because we're scared that if we fully receive love or people fully see us for who we are, they won't love us anymore. So that, then that mm. fear of abandonment and judgment comes in. But if you yeah. dive straight into the shame and where you're feeling shame in any area of your life um, and help tra and transmute that and look at it and love on yourself for it and embrace yourself and love on that part of you that felt shame. Because a lot of the time, the shame that we feel about ourselves is not ours. It's mm. what's been projected onto us as to what to believe about ourselves that's not worthy, right? Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like how mm. our bodies look, um, how we act. And, and one of the biggest things that got me through the shame that I felt from all my past endeavors with men or, you know, other fucking experiences that I've had in my life or the way I used to take drugs, I used to feel so much shame around that because I was like, I obviously didn't care about myself. I obviously didn't mm. love myself. And this was going through the healing journey. I nearly had a bloody mental health. Well, I did nearly have a mental health breakdown because of I was like I don't obviously love myself enough because I'm treating myself this way or I have treated myself that way um and if you it's self forget yeah so what I'm saying the one good one thing to hit that heal shame is truth is speaking it like speaking the truth of it allowing the conversations or saying look I done this and you'll see understanding and all that and self-forgiveness under it the thing about shame is it's hidden mm. and you can't you can't heal anything that's hidden do you know what I mean? It's in the shadows. You need to bring the light to it. And the light is the truth. So you need to speak it. You need to express it. Um, and that's why, you know, I'm big on that kind of the screaming aspect of my work now, because it's all about using your vocal cords, connecting with that anger and that shame and fucking giving it voice and just going out mm. having a fit. Giving it some welly. <laughs> giving it some welly. And, it, and, now, and now instead of saying get out of my car you're saying get out of my body <laughs> <laughs> well that's it engaging the body and I mean um that's the one thing that switched everything up for me was like going on the tantra journey and dealing with my sexual shame that I had so around my own through that journey like when did that start so that started about five years ago I think it was just after the um mm. I was going through like a real mental health. I was going through like a depression, really low mood and nothing. All my tools weren't working for me no more. And I kept getting this kind of message, address the body, address the body. And like with everything in life, I just ignored it. <laughs> I was like, no, I'm not addressing the body. No, no. Imagine no. what your spirit guides are saying up above. You're like, oh, God, yeah. this again. <laughs> When is she going to yeah, listen exactly. to us? How long, how long is this going to last? <laughs> yeah, yeah, how long, yeah. But then I always kind of, I've always been a quite um, sexual person in the sense that I'm fucking really open-minded when it comes to sex, right? I'm not a prude. I'm like, I'm open-minded about women in exploring their sexuality. Um, and so Tantra's always called, called me. So I did go to an in-person event, but because I'd had a bit of, Got, I had a bit of weight then, that's what I thought, and I was a lot slimmer than I am now, but um, I felt so out of place, and I felt that it was quite predatory, so I kind of hid away again, and then I found a woman online, I was like, right, I'm going to start dipping my toes into this, and it was through Tantra, It was, and Tantra is not always about sex, it's about reconnecting with your body, 
in a loving way and giving yourself self-forgiveness and touching yourself in a very kind of tender and loving way and just really getting to know what you like as a woman because a lot of the time through you know through sex we us women are there to get the man off right and it's lucky if we get an orgasm like I think it's a ridiculous percentage of the the female population that don't climax during penetration with a man um so yeah it was just getting to know that getting to know my orgasmic energy and that's kind of revolutionized the way I am and the way I feel about myself because if I can love the skin I in I was you know I've always been I was really horrible about fat people when I was skinny like really fucking horrible and I've obviously put like a ton of weight on now and it's called addiction transference as well because you know I've stopped the drugs and the drink and all that kind of stuff um but if I can love the body that I'm in now that I used to despise people having then I've healed a lot do you know what I mean I've come a long way and I'm more confident now than when I was walking down the street when I was like under a size fucking 10 do you know what I mean I like I look I'm like these two different people like I don't yeah. even know yeah. I wouldn't even recognize myself like yeah it's interesting but yeah that's that's what's happened it's just reconnecting with my body and allowing connecting with the emotions that are hot st- um that are held in my body and allowing my body to release that kind of naturally um and bringing music into my work as well because music was a massive part of my life mm. um so i've now got this amazing combination where i get to dance i get to scream <laughs> and i get to listen to tunes that i fucking love hang on how is this work. any how is this any different from when we met <laughs> I'm literally living my 20s in, uh, in my 40s. It's like being a healthy in way. A healthy like, way. <laughs> in the name of empowerment. The screaming, the sacred screen side of it. <laughs> well, <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, talk to me about the, how the sacred screaming came about. Well, the sacred screaming came about, there was, um, there's a lady called Mama Gina. Um, actually, it started with this lady called Karen. And I used to go to Dance of the Heart, which is where you follow, she likes to run around naked, like off her head, in the middle of a pub. (laughs) (laughs) like in the middle of a pub and made a vow in London like we've got a little room upstairs again that doesn't sound that different from our 20s either (laughs) (laughs) but anyway so we're in this room and she's like okay we're going to do a dance of the heart and which is where you attach to an emotion in your body and follow it around and allow it to move your move your body so I found that really intriguing. I was just like, oh, I love that, you know, allowing emotion, because emotion is energy in motion, you know, that old saying kind of thing. That's so cliche. Oh, yeah, it's energy in motion, man. <laughs> emotion, energy in motion. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so I've done that. And then I came across Mama Gina from her book, Pussy, a Reclamation. I don't know if anyone's ever read that. It's completely out there, but for some people but she's all about feminine embodiment and sexuality and she does this thing she calls swamping so it's like you connect with the emotion this sounds body. like something that might have happened on like Clapham Common in the in the not yeah. good way <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly I'm like oh, I, George I Michael days <laughs> I know a few swamps. Yeah. Well, she does this thing called swamping where you connect with your angst and your frustration and you move through and you go up the emotional scale until you come into mm-hmm. pleasure. So I really love that. And I facilitated like over 50 of them. I've been part of hundreds of them. And then I wanted to do something last year and I'm, I'm big on vocalization, right? Cause I'm a, I'm a, a, a vocal kind of processor. So I need to talk to process stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was just like, I'm really big on speaking your truth and being expressive. And I really wanted to do something last, and, and this is how it came up, right? I really wanted to do something. So I've been doing swamps for a while and I was just like, I really want to do something with the voice, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, it's going to be sacred something, sacred rage out or what? Mm, I don't know. I don't know. And then I was looking for a movie to watch and the new Scream movie came out and then it went bang, sacred scream. Oh my God. And then, yeah, it's it a great name. Breath, the breath work, the, 
the breath work that goes with it, the body movements and the, you know, the roars and the nose and all that kind of stuff. It all kind of came in together and it just went, just went off. It's just gone off. Awesome. And so yeah. you just had one last week, didn't you? So was that your first one? So I've done so many online. There's been quite a few that I've done online. And last week, so the Sacred Screen come out in May um, and I've done, I think I've done about 20 of them. Um, but the one on Thursday was the live, first live one in London, yeah. And awesome, how did that go? Did, w- did anyone call the police? <laughs> no. Do you know how what? many people did you really have screaming? To... <laughs> oh, I found it really hard to find a venue. Like, I, like it was. This is why it's taken me so long to do a fucking live event because everyone's like, "Oh no, we don't have that kind of event here." I'm just like, "Yeah." I said that because I'm quite open, especially in the yoga studios and the, you know, the the kind of healthy kind of places. I'm like, "Oh, I've got this event." And they're like, "Oh no, we can't have that here." And I'm just like, "All right." So then I found this venue. And it's called Kunstrom. <laughs> Got to be careful. What? Say Kunstrom. <laughs> that sounds very Swedish or Norwegian or something. It's, no, it's German. Okay. So yeah. it's probably a lot more pronounced than what I'm saying it. Um, and yeah, so he's like, you can make as much noise as you want. Like there's blackout curtains. So we just went for it, put some music on. And we went through all the tunes and then I put on a little bit of Marilyn Manson because that's like a really angry, angry man. And you can rage <laughs> out to it. Yeah. And these women were going for it. I like screaming. How many people did you have there? We had 10, but it sounded like we had about 100. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Going, going nuts. But the, I mean, the, the space was meant to hold about 30. But to be honest with you, I was should because the way the nature of the event like people were moving around throwing their arms around you should you could only have about 15 women in there so it worked out quite good because if i'd have filled it out with 30 women it would have just been too much do you know what i mean i'd need a bigger venue for that um what what do you have to do for an event like that like as energy practitioners both of us are well aware of the kind of energy that you're being in the room having to kind of cleanse the space and you know before or after all that kind of stuff is there anything different that you do when it comes to like a sacred scream event where everyone is just raging out <laughs> or is um, the energy just kind of transmuting itself through that process I think it's more intention than anything like so I've got into the habit now of connecting with <clears throat> connecting with um, my containers beforehand like maybe doing a little ritual around it and then the day before I connect with it, like with the space that we were having it, I sent Reiki to it beforehand to cleanse it. And then I went in there with my smudge stick and went round. I was like, you don't mind me going around with a smudge? He's like, no, go for it. And I'm there with a fucking smudge. Um, <laughs> and uh, I think we were playing some gangster rap as well. <laughs> I was Love it. it. So, oh. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah so it was yeah that's what I do and the the mistake I did this time is because it was just everything was just happening so quickly on the day I didn't ground myself beforehand mm-hmm. um so by the end of it so well I did I grounded myself like for what I would do for a Reiki healing but in future I'd need to properly spend like a good hour grounding proper grounding myself because mm-hmm. at the end of it my mind was gone my eyes were like that <laughs> <laughs> and I couldn't form words like it was I was just so ungrounded I was just like I, I had to get home I was just like I need to get back into my little cocoon yeah. and just I also find that in London though because I remember I think the first the first group Reiki workshop that I ran in London was it was just before I moved out here and it was in it was in Oxford Street I remember we walked around Harrods and stuff for lunch and I just remember coming out of that workshop after doing the achievements just before lunch and all of us came out we just felt like massive space cadets just going (laughs) it's just London is just not the kind of place to you know to do that kind of thing and then not get grounded before you come out (laughs) yeah you could just feel completely discombobulated like because I I would I got to the end of it and I was just like you know when you've been clubbing all fucking weekend and it's Monday morning no I've got I've got no clue what you're on about (laughs) I've never done that before (laughs) 
<laughs> but you walk out on a Monday morning and the sun's coming up and you're like, uh, and you've got to go on a train to get to the Where's place. The sunglasses? Where to <laughs> yeah. Where's the sunglasses? Oh my God, normal people, everyone's going to, that was what it was like. I was just like, <laughs> yeah, oh, that horrible. kind of, fuck, hide me away. I felt like a gremlin, like completely discombobulated. But um, I think you're right, because it's in Shoreditch as well, so it's quite a grimy area, like, the, yeah. I mean, if you think of the energetics of that area, like... Oh, but also God. just anywhere in London, I think, is so yeah. busy that, like, I don't, I don't know if you'd find anywhere in London, you know, where, yeah, where it wasn't really like that. And you can, yeah, it's got, an, like, an undercurrent of seediness and yeah, hedonism yeah, yeah. and grime and grit. Yeah. Um, all those places we used to love. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I've got to get out of central London, Carl. I'm like, I cannot believe I moved back to central London. Um, so, yeah. So I'm just Well, like, you know, I've got, I've got a spare room with your name all over it in Perth <laughs> if you ever want to join me over here. So. <laughs> do you know what? Right? I've been like, oh, man, I really need to get to Oz, but do you know, since I've been diagnosed with ADHD, um, I just like I don't know whether I could handle the tr- the fucking planes now, like because the menopause is completely exacerbated, whatever the word is, exacerbated, <laughs> <laughs> exacerbated, exacerbated, <laughs> exacerbated my symptoms. Like I have the oh, attention just not, of just knock yourself out on a plane. There's only twenty four hours of your life, so you'll you'll sort you'll make it. <laughs> yeah, I'll have to neck a sleeping pill or something. <laughs> Uh, so okay so for anyone in the audience who's listening right now who is knee deep in those kind of those emotions of shame guilt grief whatever they might be top three tools for starting to process it if they've never ever done anything like this before where do they start okay I'd say you need to get help with it because sometimes the shit that comes up can be a bit overwhelming um Mm. so you definitely need someone in your corner but what I would say is to one get curious um see where it's coming from you can connect with it in your body ask it what it wants what it needs to tell you there's a million and one things that you can do so my would mine would be get curious and connect with it find out where it is in your body and ask it to be removed get in your body and move your body around Mm. just trying to release it and voice it like do journaling or get a voice note out and just speak whatever needs to be spoken of it. Um, mm-hmm. Or get a get a cushion and fucking kick the punch the shit out of it. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, that's how I started with really removing my shame. Um, so those would be my top tips. Like, connect, mm-hmm. get curious, connect with the body, move the body, and connect and speak the truth of it when it comes to shame. That first one is one of my favorite coaching tools, I reckon, is really getting people to, you know, tune in. And this is it it kind of goes against the usual grain, because whenever anyone feels anything negative, the first response generally is to go, "Okay, I need to not feel that. So I'm going to pop this, drink this, ignore it, go to the gym, do this, do that, the other, rather than just actually. I I think I only realized like years and years into my own personal development journey that sometimes the quickest way of processing an emotion is just to literally sit and tune yes, into it <laughs> rather yeah. than going because I, I realized as well that you know just going okay I've got to go and do EFT or I'll go and do forgiveness or I meditate I realized that those were all they could all, work, all be avoidance tactics as well right because I still wasn't sitting there and really feeling it and so yes. I just kind of had this whole switch where you know it for anyone that's watching if you're feeling any kind of negative emotion what you do is just you really you amplify it sit there in stillness really really like feel it really feel it allow yourself to feel it turn the dial up on the feeling of it and then feel like where am I feeling that in my body you might feel it in your stomach like this big heavy brick you might feel like this kind of whirlwind in your chest you might feel like there's kind of hands around your throat you know whatever it is that that you're feeling really really tune into that and think if it was a color what color would it be like anger would generally be red or shame might be like this murky yucky sludgy muddy kind of color um and then think like is it solid is it liquid is it gas does it cover part of my body all of my body is it inside outside and then think can I get rid of this now am I actually willing to release it now and if you are 
just flood like I love calling in all spirit guides and angels ask them to be with you and I, I like imagine them like in a circle around me with these like care bear hearts just beaming light out from their hearts and, and their hands just into wherever whatever space in my body that that emotion is sitting and like I see it kind of breaking up or shattering or dissolving or just kind of moving out of my body and you just fill your whole body with light and just allow that emotion to pass out of your body um, and and kind of just transmute itself so yeah it's a really really powerful technique that yeah that's one of the techniques that I I think I learned that off you as well mm. um like actualizing the the emotion that you're feeling and amplifying it yeah I mean, the thing is, you have to feel it. Like, that's what the emotions are there for. You have to feel yeah. it. They're not going to go away. You can numb it all you want. You can run away from it mm. all you want. And like you said... But, it, like, but isn't like, it so... It's so counterintuitive to actually feel the feeling. Don't you think? Like, all of society tells us, if you feel like shit, go and do this thing or buy yeah. this thing, and you'll feel better. And it's all about running away from it and not actually yeah. feeling how you're feeling. So yeah. it feels it feels like you're almost doing something wrong to sit there. And if you're feeling angry to really, really, really feel angry. Yeah. Well, I mean, the society's run on cortisol and fucking head game, isn't it? It's like mm. it's just focus mm. on the stress and the oh, God. So it keeps you discombobulated from your body where most of your emotions are, are stored. And as you said, it's like it feels counterintuitive to feel. And also women have the added kind of thing of being too emotional and you know not allowed to feel our rage you know mm. that kind of stuff because it's so not it's not very feminine is it it's not very feminine no or, you like on rage, blog no, no. or and then we bypass it again oh it's the moon or like fucking do you know what yeah, i mean oh yeah. the planets are all in so we just bypass one thing or we just what's the word i can't uh replace one thing with another um and like you said like with some of the tools we're just numbing again. Like I was doing the same with LOA and all that kind of stuff when I first started this journey. And it only got me to a certain point. And then I was just like straight back to where I started, like feeling in that depression mm. and that low mood. So it is really important once I started learning to properly connect with my body and feel those emotions. And one of my top tips as well is to drop into pleasure, like coming in and by pleasure, I mean is... Um, exciting the five senses right like just dropping into the now moment and hearing what you're hearing seeing what you're seeing tasting what you're tasting um I mean you can go all out and have sexual pleasure obviously <laughs> you can go all out and do that kind of stuff but um yeah it's just dropping into the now moment and really getting intimate with your reality that will help transmute that kind of energy mm. of shame and stuff I mean you can feel the shame do what Carly does, fill yourself with light and then drop into pleasure and just come back into that now moment and be present. Because mm. um, once you're in the now moment, you're not thinking of the past, you're not thinking of the future. There is none of that. Do you know what I mean? You're just really connected deeply with your body. And you mm. can't feel the pleasure of euphoria and joy and happiness and excitement and all those fucking things until you properly allow yourself to feel shame, fear, guilt. Mm. and rage and whatever those kind of heavier emotions are um yeah. because if you're hiding a load of emotions you're hiding you are hiding from the other ones you can't feel the full velocity of yeah any yeah of them, do you know what I mean so because you're because your vibration is different isn't it like when you're you're at those real low vibrating emotions of shame guilt grief sadness depression that's right at the bottom of the emotional scale and then then you've got like Love is about 500, gratitude is about 750, yeah. and then around like 900 to 1,000, you've got things like joy and, you know, the, the energy of kind of fun and enlightenment and all those kind of things. But you can't get from there to there without going through all the bad through shit in it. between yeah. and, and actually processing it. Um, yeah. every, everyone just wants a magic, magic pill, you know, that silver bullet that's just going to, yeah. like, completely take them from there to there. Yeah. I mean, that's a, and I think I put a post out today saying like shame is a bungee rope. You can quantum leap it. You can jump mm. over it. You can bypass it all you want, but it will fucking bring you straight back down. And you'll only get so far and then you'll get a taste of it. And then it'll come to taste of the joy, mm. taste of the excitement, taste of the, all the love. And it will just bring you back down again. Yeah. Until Which you, almost feels worse, doesn't it? Like when when you've gone the from crash. there to there that crash is like, oh, then, then you almost feel like, oh, I thought I'd done the work on this. I thought I'd got rid of it. And I think yeah. 
a lot of people will will feel like they've done so much work on a particular topic and that it's not worked or they're doing it wrong and it's none of those things it's that no. there are layers upon layers and upon yeah. layers and upon layers of all the same stuff that has to be cleared yeah. it's not just clearing one layer and that's it but there's the pattern in itself right because if you find yourself that you're doing these quantum rebounds all the time um when you're leaping forward and then you're crashing back um and then you're beating yourself up about it that's the pattern there you're in the pattern mm. of beating yourself up and shaming yourself so that yeah. right there is the pattern so the thing what that's called for so if anyone's going through that what's called for there is more compassion more mm -hmm. love more understanding more curiosity and you'll find that the leap won't be so bad like because i used to do duality like no one's business polarity queen over here i'd be fucking depressed polarity queen without the bipolar right that's what i would call myself because one minute i'd be down in the dumps and the next minute i'd be flying high um and it was only because of i used to when i was flying high i'd be fearing that i'm gonna have a crash and then when i was in the crash i'd be beating myself up for not loving myself enough and shaming myself and all this kind of stuff mm. hang on let me mm -hmm. just um turn the volume down so the, i mean the the yeah so the key there is to show yourself more compassion more love more understanding than you've ever done before um because basically healing is reparenting yourself right it's giving yourself that love and the and all the things that you needed as a child mm. so yeah. what do you need in that moment more judgment or do you need more compassion mm. and i love what you said about getting curious as well I think one of my favorite tools is is just asking curious questions you know we can get really really stuck in that negative self-talk of you know why me why is this happening again you know this that mm -hmm. and the other but actually instead of fixating and ruminating with your thinking to instead say okay how can I make it easier on myself right now what kind of things can I open up to have better experiences right now and just literally putting all these curious questions out there to the universe and just waiting for the answers instead of just bitch slapping yourself with your thinking all day long yeah 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 mm. no i 100 percent agree with that um it's curiosity i think i feel is the key to everything and not taking everything it opens up to you start tapping into limitless possibilities when you're curious right and instead of taking mm. everything as possible um as this or that and you're opening up to the what ifs do you know what i mean and that's like yeah. with everything though that's like with any kind of belief thoughts um any kind of belief system or anything your own belief system or belief systems externally just having that curiosity um it opens mm. you up to it it raises your vibration you don't stay there that's why I'm, that's why i was saying like get curious about your shame because then you're not in the shame you're asking what yeah. it wants you're, you're yeah yeah up, you know yeah um, yeah what what message does my shame have for me yeah, today yeah what does it have what does it yeah. want to say because shame will want to say something it mm -hmm. will want to either say fuck you i said no <laughs> this isn't yeah. mine do yeah. you know what i mean it has a voice and so yeah. it's because the shame is all the voices that would you know shame well, rage mainly is all the no's that went unheard mm -hmm. that's what rage is it's all the protests that you've had in your life your boundaries have been crossed. The consent's been taken. All the all the violations. All yeah. the violations. Yeah, great word. Um, that's happened in your life, and you've internalized it, and it just stays there mm. um, under this kind of like it's like a steaming pot. You lift the lid of that, and all kinds of shit comes out. But mm. in, amongst that shit is like a lot of empowerment it's a lot of expansion there's a lot of magnetism. and lightness lightness and, yeah, and and lightness. when your vibration raises and you you shed that heavy shit that's been holding you back and you you become a higher vibration isn't mm -hmm. it true then that you start magnetizing all that shit that you've wanted your whole life towards yeah. you and living yeah. a better life as your true authentic self as well so what is in your next 20 years teens imagine oh, where we're going in the next 20 years <laughs> <laughs> like seriously see, i'm like 20 years like i'm like i'll be 66 in 20 years i want to be retired love <laughs> <laughs> no. I, I can't see you stopping doing what you're doing like for good though you know like th this work is too much fun it's too much fun and it's fucking revolutionary because the the 
just by simple techniques of women connecting with their body and being able to have a space of like letting it out it's transforming them they're like feeling so liberated from it and you know that's what will change this planet um people feeling liberated and expressed and you know held and witnessed and loved and all these kind of things in their messiness so well what they deem is their messiness i think it's glorious i stand there and like give it to me ladies um so i do <laughs> usually i'm like I don't now know it's, 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 it's no longer get out of my pub it's like come into my pub so um yeah i see big visions for sacred scream i mean i'm booked into chester someone's booked me for chester in january and I've got plans for next year. Like the big vision I have of it, and I'm going to share it with you now. I'm feeling SW4 style women in a park screaming oh, their fucking heads off. <laughs> oh, yeah. So for anyone who's watching who doesn't know what SW4 was, a mate of mine ran this amazing festival in, yeah. on Clapham Common every August. And it was just bloody brilliant. It was so, it so good. It started in the backyard, didn't it? It started in the Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, the yeah. Same started backyard parties i can't remember where it was somewhere in south west london i think you know where oh, all the all the aussies and kiwis live no i don't i don't think it was clapham originally um when it was in this backyard but it did kind of migrate to clapham and then they just set off this massive festival and it just mm. was amazing he's living in sydney these days but and still still running parties and stuff over there but sw4 scream queen style that yeah. sounds amazing yeah. in a forest so somewhere funny. Hundreds, yeah. maybe thousands of women screaming their bush their heads off. Diff. Bush yeah. diff. I love it. That's so good. <laughs> uh, there's, the, it sounds very witchy poo as well. <laughs> mm. But it is so how, is, how how are people going to find out about your events? Um, so they can follow me on Facebook. Um, Facebook. I'm on this. <laughs> I'm Tina Eloise. Um, I'm trying to get my TikTok game. <laughs> TikTok game up, but any any platform is Tina Eloise London or Tina Eloise. You mm. can't miss me. I'm the fat Cockney witch with the white streak yeah. in the hair. <laughs> <laughs> you can't miss Jean. No, you yeah, definitely no. You can't. You definitely like if you can't. don't if you don't see me, you'll hear me, right? So it's one of those things. I um, can care. She is very very gobby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't lost that, but it's a more empowered Bobby now than what it used to be. So I think it's a yeah. lot more dangerous than what it used to be. What do you reckon? But in a yeah. good way, in a much better in way. A good way. Yeah. More dangerous um, for everyone else and less dangerous for you, I reckon. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm not deflecting anymore. So that's a good thing. I'm not trying to hurt people with what I say. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and that's where you get to. You stop deflecting and you start, re you know, before you respond to anything, going back to what we're saying, when you heal your shit, before you was, before you, you used to react, now you respond or you take a breath or you'd be like, yeah. and most of the shit that used to wind me up, I'm just like, oh, whatever. Like now, yeah. it's just so much an easier life. Oh, anyway, yeah. how do people, um, uh, yes, Facebook, Instagram, I'm not really on there, but I'm on there. Um, or that, you know, I've got like a sacred scream online happening on the 14th of December. So if anyone wants to come along for the end of year scream, um, awesome. they're quite welcome to join. It's free or they can leave a donation. It's entirely up to them. What's your website? Oh yeah, Tina Eloise. But it's it's crap. It's so uh, com. <laughs> you're not Nothing's gonna see crap. like anything about you're not gonna see the about <laughs> page on there or anything like that. You're gonna see my latest offer when you open up a page and that's it. Well that's what people need to know, isn't it? And I think yeah, we put a freebie yeah. link in as well in the Facebook yeah. group, you've got a freebie. Tell people about your freebie. So that's the portals of wealth system. So that's like the five wounds that fem women have, feminine, feminine leaders have um, around success and wealth. And that's the witch wound, mother wound, sister wound, whore wound and bitch wound. And they all show up in different ways within our businesses and within our money game. So um, it's just a little book on identifying them what one's running the show for you and also it has three ways that you can start transmuting it and um yeah try transmuting it and changing it up really um but yeah that's all changing this year as well there's a lot there's a lot coming up there's a lot of back back end stuff happening which is annoying because I'm like in that stage where I just want to be out there now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like you're already pretty out there, teens. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
Thanks, Carl. <laughs> I've always got your back, babe. <laughs> Before we wrap up, I reckon we should put it out there, see if anyone's got any questions for Tina. Uh, how do I get onto the chat? There's no questions so if in there. If you've got a question, peeps, then uh, either unmute yourself and have a chat or uh, type it in the chat bar. And if not, we will end the call for the night. The night's morning, darling. Well, it's yeah, not. Morning. It's not morning here, babe. It is. It is extremely dark outside. It's nearly eight o'clock here. Seven fifty-one well, p.m. Dark here. It's grey. It's overcast. And, that doesn't sound uh, like London, babe. <laughs> it's grey. Do you know what? The buildings are starting to look really grey, even though they're not. But they like look grey in this weather, don't they? Like everything. It's that, it's just that like... cloudy. Yeah, that just all that mm. cloudy, boring bollocks. Well, when we came over for a month, me and Cam, it was it was like glorious. It was early twenty, early it's to mid twenties. Nice, the whole yeah. time we were there, out of a whole month, we had two rainy days, and that was it. One in the Lake District, and one at home. That's it for the whole month. So yeah. yeah. That month All right. quick calls. I know it did, and I didn't even get to see you. So we have no questions, so we are going to wrap up. But if you do have any questions, feel free to put them in the Facebook group event. Um, mm -hmm. This call has been recorded as well, so I'll put the replay in the Facebook group, and I'll be sending this out in my newsletter. I'm guessing you will as well, teams. Um, yeah. And thanks, Carol. Um, oh, welcome, and Carol. Yeah. And um, it's been awesome to chat to you, my old mate. It's oh, been really, really yeah. good to see your amazing face and uh, takes me back for sure. Oh. <laughs> I bloody love you, teens, and I, oh, I, I love, love you too. I, and I love, I love, I just love you. You're great, and I love, I love having watched your journey, and I'm really excited to see where it goes and where yeah, it I keeps might, going as well. To, uh, I might have to come to Australia and do a scream event there. Get Carl, Fuck yeah, you're welcome any time. Yeah. Yeah, you'll be there on the stage with me. We'll get a DJ. <laughs> yeah, wicked. Yep. We, yeah. I can hook a sister up for sure. Make it happen. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> because then you'll also come and you'll uh, our carols well up for it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, uh, and I reckon all of my Reiki students will be pretty up for it as well. So we'll yeah. uh it will be a sellout event for sure. Might have to yeah. be here for like a month and run a few weekends. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah, I just got fun and, it, and cl claim it all back on business. <laughs> yeah, that's beauty, right? I can travel. Oh, it's a business expense. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, well, thank you baby. so much. <laughs> thank you so much for joining us tonight. Stay on. Thank I'm going to end the. Um, I'm going to end the recording. Um, and thanks everyone for joining us. We will thank catch you. up with you all again. Feel free to leave the room.